Okay, good morning. It's 9-10, November 27th. It's my second video for today. Let's see if we can get through this, you guys, and I'll load it up this evening, maybe. Okay, God bless you guys. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Be strong and be bold, you guys. We got a lot of overcast. Clouds are moving quick. A lot of overcast here. Matthews, chapter 7, 21 through 29. They say it's supposed to be clear this afternoon, though. Um, around 12 noon. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. You hear that, you guys? That does the will of my Father. Now, you guys, I know it sounds like I pick on the once saved, always saved. But that's because they don't mention these things. About doing the will of the Father. And Jesus said, those that do the will of my Father are my brothers and sisters. And I have to say it, the once saved, always saved. They're preaching a different doctrine okay what they're doing is they're they're taking truth and they're diminishing the rest by you know taking the truth what's written and then they're not giving you the scriptures that warn you they're not telling you even what i just read here you know only those that do the will of his father uh which is in heaven but he that does the will of my father which is in heaven many will say to me that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. You guys, this once saved, always saved doctrine, they're diminishing the word of God. They're not even talking about doing the will of the Father or obeying Jesus' teachings none of that if they are i mean i don't watch them all the time okay I've, I've watched i heard a little bit of it and i went eh something just didn't wasn't right you know and i knew to get away from it and then after, over the years as i was reading scripture i noticed where it was saying these things that i'm reading to you now and whether they read them or not i don't think they do because it wouldn't go with what they're teaching you know, how would they tell people, you know, those that sin are of the devil when they're telling you they sin all the time, that they do, you know, I don't, this, you know, all right, here we are, now I'm at verse 24, therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock, and when the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, it fell not. Okay? For it was founded upon a rock. You guys, the word, the whole word of God, we need to be reading it. And we were warned multiple times about the devil, how his ministers are ministers of righteousness, and he, the devil comes as an angel of light. Okay, this is around us, you guys, and they're going to come at you with love. Okay, they will come at you with love. I got them constantly kind of trying to come in and post their little comments on my channel about, you know, once saved, always saved. They can't lose their salvation. You know, he, all your future sins. It just sounds like they just made a, a, a future uh, sinning, you know, a future in it. You know, to, to keep them going, you know. Christ came to destroy the works of the devil, not to plan a future with it. Okay? Now, if he's our Lord and our master, what should we be doing? What did his disciples do? They loved not their lives unto death. Now, if, you know, you guys, it's common sense here. We have to be careful with, with everything you're hearing from other people, too. They, you might look at them and they might sound lovely and pleasant. you got to remember, that's why it says, test the spirits. they got a different spirit in them, you guys. That's what it comes down to. They have a different spirit. And where God said, I will send them strong delusions to believe the lies. 
Okay, we don't believe the lies. We know the truth, and we love the Lord. And what we do, we do because out of obedience. They don't even do that. You know, they just say it's this and this, and that's it. You know, then they want to go to their games, playing games. You know. You know, you guys, a lot of a lot of us. I don't expect this channel to be a popular channel. I really don't. I've had it for five years, and most of you have been watching me for a while. You know I'm I'm straight. I'm straight. Because the Word says, you know, John the Baptist came to prepare the way to make it straight. Okay? When they say faith and grace and nothing else, does that sound straight? Or does it sound like a broad way? To me, it sounds like a very broad way. You know, they're opening up the gates. Actually, that new church they got out there, it's called Gateway in Texas, where Joel Osteen is. <laughs> okay, verse 27. And when the rains descended and the floods came, well, where he was saying here, everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them not. Okay, now this one saved always saved when they say grace and faith and nothing else. Now, Let's get to where he says these sayings of mine, and they do them not. Does it sound like uh, once saved, always saved are doing those sayings of Christ? I don't even hear him talking about them. And he says, and does them not, um, I will liken him unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And when the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrines. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Okay, you guys? So, you know, and his commandments are not grievous. They're not. You know, people should be, wow, you know? loving, longing to do these things. That's why I say we want to get this out of us. The sin. We we want to get it out. Purge it out of us, you know. Ask the Lord. Say, Lord, create and give me a new clean heart, Lord. Give me a clean heart. And, and create in me a renewed spirit. You know. Give me a new spirit. A renewed spirit. You know, one that's going to be obedient and one that wants to follow you in all your ways. You know? He came to wash us and to cleanse us. This is where we have to be making ourselves ready. You know? In the blood of Christ. We don't take this for granted. You know? This is time is up. Matthew 25, 1-13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven... Um, be likened to the ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. See, I wanted to give you the, the foundations, those that built upon the sand and those that built upon the rock because fought, because he, he likened one to a wise man and the other to a foolish man. That's why I wanted to give you that first, okay? Now we're going into the ten virgins. Five are wise and five are foolish. All right, five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. They that took their lamps and took no oil with them. See, in other words, they weren't his words. The word, you know, that's what we have to be obeying and doing. They're not doing that. They're not doing it. They're even telling you they're not, you know? While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Then at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go rather to them that were selling and buy it for yourself. Remember it said to go to them that are selling, the ones that are telling them this and this and nothing else. 
Are you buying that? I'm not buying it. I'm not buying that at all. I'm, I'm filling myself up with the word of God, man. That's my oil right there, the whole word. Obeying his teachings, man. I'm following Christ, man, daily. I ain't going to no baseball, football, basketball games. I told you in 2014, I told my football coach the games are over. All right. And while they all went to buy, the bridegroom came and they were ready, went with him into the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. But he answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour where the Son of Man cometh. You guys, where he opens the door and says, I know you not. I can imagine him saying that. To who? To people that weren't listening to his words. That weren't reading his teachings. Can you imagine if you gave somebody instructions to do something and then all of a sudden they came to you later and they didn't do it? And they didn't do it. And then instead they followed some other instructions when you knew the right way, but they wanted to come another way. And then all of a sudden they came banging on the door, you know, and they didn't listen to your instructions. I'd say, go buy from those other people those that you were doing you know do what they were doing you know get whatever they had you know I told you what to do and how to build and how to come you know they were building their own way they built their own way Galatians chapter 1 8 through 9 I'm sorry Matthew seven twenty four. Therefore, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him into a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Galatians chapter 1, 8 through 9. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have, we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have received, let him be accursed. You guys, you can read the gospel. You can read Jesus' teachings. You can read the disciples who gave you warnings. Okay, that was Holy Spirit inspired. Gave people warnings. Yet they chose to listen to these other people that are saying this and this and nothing else. Nothing. It's all done. You know? Listen, we know we're covered by the blood of Christ. We're washed. We have to be in order to go. But now we have to keep our lamps filled. We have to shine bright. We have to, you know, and only by obeying Christ. And then he said to come out from among this. He didn't wake you up to keep playing in the mud here. We were all in this mud pile. We were all filthy, dirty. And then he came and he cleaned us. Now it's time to keep yourself clean. And, and it's time to get as close to him as possible. This and this and nothing else, that's not getting close to him. That's not drawing near to him. That's not abiding in him. You know, a lot of these people are saying this, this, and nothing else. I guarantee if you knew him, watched him closely, they're probably very much of the world very much because the world heareth them all right Matthew 13 24 25 another parable he put forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man that sowed good seed in his field but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and they went their way See, the weeds have been growing up around us for a long time, you guys. Look at what they're doing now, you know? They're massively um, choking out a lot of stuff, man. A lot of people are blinded by all this. Okay. Okay. 
Colossians 3 6 For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. John fourteen twenty three. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. You guys, if it's just faith and grace and nothing else, why do we got all this other scripture that's clearly warning you and telling you what to do? Jesus said, had he not come, there would be... They, but he, he showed them what sin is. That's why they don't have a cloak for their sin anymore. And if you listen to these once saved, always saved, they, they treat the blood of Christ like it's a cloak. For their sins. That's what they do. They're clearly treating it like it's a cloak. Something for them to hide under. And it's not. It's to wash us clean. To make us clean. When you read his words. His words clearly tell you. We have to purge this uh, out of us. We have to get it out. It's sin. It's evil. We have to get it out, you guys. Look around you, man. Why do you think this place is so wicked? This place is filled with wickedness, evil. Why do you think it's so wicked? It's sin that abides in people. You have to get it out. Luke 17, 21. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. <clears throat> you guys, we're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of the eye. Those that are still of the world and there's in the mud, they're going to be quite surprised. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace. It's joy in the Holy Ghost. Matthew 12, 24. Guys, I want to remind you this too. Our spirits are going to be groaning to get out of this place, man. To get out of here. Because of what we're seeing. It's massively, you know, getting more and more wicked. See, as some of these clouds are clearing away, I'm seeing the little chemtrails. Matthew's 12.28 but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. You hear that? He was casting out devils that was in people. How many more do you think there are around us today? People that don't even fear God. I mean, he was doing it back then when people had a fear of God. A lot of them feared God. Colossians chapter 1, 27. I'm talking about the Hebrews now that feared God. You had your conquerors out there that were ruthless and, you know, the Roman army and stuff that were had many different strange gods, you know. Colossians 127. To whom God would make known what the riches of, of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You see, guys, the Christ in us is what helps us. You know, he helps us with our infirmities. He helps us to overcome. He helps us to be to be strengthened. You know, Christ in us. We can do it with Christ. It's His power by His might. We can do these things. This, these are the part of the reasons He came here for: to cleanse us, also to abide in us, to strengthen us, to give, to make a way for us to come back. The devil wants you to keep sinning. That's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to keep submitting yourself to sin. And then go, well, you can just go repent again, you know. I'll just repent after I do it again, you know. But it seems if you read in the scripture, it says, if you're taking pleasure in this, if you take pleasure, I will send you strong delusions to make you believe the lies so that you'll be damned. Okay? Yeah, but if you fear God, you're going to depart from this stuff. You're not going to want to do it. You won't want to do it if you truly fear God. But this is what's going on, you guys. Don't, don't, don't be deceived. Don't deceive yourself. Better yet, 
don't deceive yourself. If I was going to say anything, don't deceive yourself. It's bad enough when they're out there doing it, trying to deceive you. But when you deceive yourself, wow. First John chapter 5, verse 5. Who is he that covereth the world, but he that believeth that, that overcometh the world? Listen, Jesus came here, and he overcame, didn't he? Yes, he did. Now, if Christ is abiding in you now, and he overcame the world, listen to this. First John 5, 5. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? And if, and if you let him abide in you, and you in him, and you know what he did through his power and his might, you can do this. You can. Revelations chapter 3, verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Uh, overcometh? Wow. These people that just say once saved, always saved, and nothing else. Wow, here it's saying in Revelation 3.21, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I, I also overcame, and I am set down with my Father in his throne. Overcome what? The one saved always says, it's done, and there's nothing else. Even if you sin or continue to sinning, they are hyper-graced because they warn you not as scriptures told you. He is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may destroy. <coughs> okay. Excuse me, you guys. Revelation 3.21 Now I'm going to read it from 18 to 21. I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou may be rich, white remnant, that thou mayest be clothed, that thy shame of thy nakedness do not appear. You guys, let me ask something. If you were still continuing in sin, and then Christ shows up, would you be ashamed? Or if you knew that we're in the end times and you're still playing games when he shows up, would you be ashamed that you weren't truly following him and doing what his word said? See, we're told to come out from among them. And if you're sitting at a game doing what they do, then you didn't come out from among them. You're still running with them. Anoint thy eyes with the eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame. And I sat down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says under the churches. Revelations 3.11 Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. You guys, I take these words very seriously. I must ask this question. Do the once saved always save? Do they warn you about this? Do you ever hear it? I don't know. I don't watch them all the time. That's why I have to ask you this. All right, Daniel's 12.10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried that let, that no man, or wait, many and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked will understand, but the wise shall understand. You guys, the wicked will continue to do wicked. Okay, like what? Continued sinning? Because they are not resisting the devil, but taking pleasure in unrighteousness? Could that be what that means? Zechariah 13, 9. I will bring the third part through the fire, 
and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call upon my name, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people. And they shall say, The Lord is my God. Isn't that a beautiful thing? That you'll be able to call upon the Lord, and you'll go, That's my people. Yeah, he hears us. That's my people. Versus those that are still playing games. Those that are still submitting themselves to Satan. James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed is a man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Amen. 1 Corinthians 10 13. There has no temptation taken you, but such is what's common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But will with the temptation, he'll also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. James 4, 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God, Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Galatians 5.16 This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You guys ever wonder why these hyper-grace future sinners, or future once saved, always saved, why don't they ever read these scriptures to you about overcoming and resisting? You know? I wonder why. Scripture tells you why. Okay? Satan comes as an angel of light. If it's not them, who is it? If it's not them, who is it? Who else is out there? Those are the only ones I see. Those are the only ones that come up against me for trying to discourage people from sinning. Trying to say I'm calling it work, calling it saying I'm works rather than grace. You know? I'm all about the grace of God. Because we wouldn't be here even talking about it if it wasn't for the grace of God. There's no works that anybody could possibly do, and the devil knows that. You know? It's only by the blood of Christ and the grace of God that we've been pulled and saved. Because we were walking into the course of this world. But we no longer do the things we once used to do. Now we want to be obedient. Why? He's coming down here for the, for the children of disobedience. Not for the children that are following him and obeying his word. First John 5, 4. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith that's first john 5 4 see there's our faith that overcometh the world because we believe in what god has done for us and what jesus christ has covered us washed us we're not going back into the mire as many are god help them we just try to warn them to resist the evil and the sin and they come at you with with bitterness you know Romans sixteen seventeen. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. So you know the truth now. Okay? Philippians chapter 3, verse 2. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the cons conscience. Conscience. 1 Timothy 4, 1-2 Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron. All right, 1 Timothy chapter 6, 3-5 If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing, 
but dotting about questions and strifes of words, whereof some envy, strife, railings, evil submersions, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. The word is life. These once saved, always safe, are on a wide path and nothing straight about it. They refuse to listen to sound doctrine. And they refuse to read the scriptures which are from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. They are taking our faith and the grace of God to make a broad path to destruction. They lead people away from the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. They're not even reading them or teaching them. You know, they're not even telling you that Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You know, if you love me. They're not even saying that. I don't think they are. Like I said, I don't watch them all the time. I stay away from them. Guys, we follow Jesus Christ because we hear his voice and we love him. By grace, we have been saved. It's not of works because no man can do that. Okay, it's only by the grace of God. It's a gift can't earn it we have obeyed from the heart and unto good works we do what we do we are of the obedient God's wrath is coming on the children of disobedience Colossians 3 6 for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ and God when Christ who is our life shall appear then shall you also appear with him in glory Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil conspicuous, covetedness, which is idolatry, for which things the sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in which you also walked some time when you lived in them. But now you have put off all these things, all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Okay, you guys, got that done. 32 minutes, almost 33. Takes a little while, but it's done here, you guys. We're almost done. Time's running out, okay? Be very strong and be bold in the name of our Lord and our Savior. Jesus Christ. Um, be strong, you guys. God bless you. In Jesus' name.